Well, I think, especially at VMI, it's a lot of little things that lead into the bigger concept of leading. Um, so I keep that whether it was on the soccer field or whether it was during the rat line or in the classroom, all of those little moments, maybe it was 10 or 15 minutes where I was kind of thrown into the fire to lead, uh, those moments definitely helped to direct me into a path of where I know I could be a successful leader. Welcome to the VMI Center for Leadership and Ethics Leader Journey Podcast. This podcast aims to share leadership stories from our VMI Corp cadets and high-profile leaders who visit the Center for Leadership and Ethics and VMI Post. We're on this journey with you. Hi, I'm Derek Pinkham. And hey, I'm Emily Coleman, and we're your host of the podcast. We caught up with Whitney Roberson in the PX to chat about her VMI leader journey. Whitney is a history major from Chesapeake, Virginia. She is the captain of the women's soccer team, president of the Pramaje Club, an investigator for the CEA, Cadet Equity Association, and the vice president of SAC, Student Athletic Advisory Committee. And she plans to go to graduate school after VMI. We discussed how her views on leadership have changed since the rat line and how VMI has prepared her to lead in diverse settings. She talked about the little moments that change you and teach you how to lead. And without further delay, we give you Whitney Roberson. Welcome, Whitney Roberson, to the VMI Leader Journey podcast. Thank you. So we're just going to start off with, tell us a little bit about yourself and what led you to VMI. Okay, well, hello, good morning. I'm Whitney Roberson, and I'm a second classman at VMI. I'm a history major, and hopefully I'll be able to double major in Spanish as well. Um, I'm on the women's soccer team. And besides soccer leading me to VMI, it was definitely the rigors and academics and the challenge of just everyday life, um, especially during the rat line, uh, not really having time to have your own schedule. Everything's kind of made for you. So that was definitely one of the biggest challenges that I will have to face. And I was ready to accept that challenge. So, that- so I'm from Chesapeake, Virginia. Um, I was in Air Force Junior ROTC in high school and my instructors. They were a uh, big VMI fan, so I heard about VMI freshman year, actually, and continued to hear about VMI throughout my time in high school, and then one day I got, I was contacted by the coaches, and the pieces all kind of fell in place, and it just worked out perfectly. So, in terms of leadership, what have you been involved in at VMI? So, this year, I definitely am involved in a lot. I am the president of the Pramaji Club, which is the, it's almost equivalent to like the Black Student Union to other colleges and universities, but it's basically here at VMI, it's a minority club and for students who stand in solidarity with other uh, minorities here at VMI. I am also an assistant investigator on um, cadet government, CEA. I am the vice president of SAC, which is the Student uh, Athlete Advisory Committee. And then last but certainly not least, probably the most, um, keeps me the most busy, is I'm a um, captain on the women's soccer team. So being in these clubs and being in this leadership position, how has that changed your views on leadership? I mean- Coming into VMI, I always thought a leader was someone who just takes a group of people and makes it or tries to make it to the finish line, try to accomplish a goal, but it's so much more than that. Leadership inquires like, the whole person so you have to think about the person's not only their strengths but also their weaknesses and how those can help you get towards that finish line you I'm definitely more hands-on so I get more of the trial and error um, parts of leadership so I definitely think that the classroom sizes play a significant part in leadership in BMI it allows people to grow um, not only in their studies but also in those interpersonal relationships with their classmates or their professors, or just in their um, field of study in general, um, they can become more receptive to different people, different thoughts, um, different outlooks on how you can get to a solution, maybe in a different way. So I definitely think the classroom builds um, leadership more than people think. Can't be a um, Trial and error definitely helps a lot, but I also think having the people having people around you that are going to push you to not be afraid to make those mistakes 
or push you to lead in areas that you might feel uncomfortable, but they know you're ready for it. Um, I'm going to use an example of my coach. He pushes me to lead the team in different areas that I never thought that I could, but he sees something in me that he says, you can do it. It's your time and go for it now because you're the person you're the person that this group should have leading and you're ready for it. So definitely having someone, maybe like a mentor or coach or professor around um, definitely helps because for the most part, they've been through things like that, especially whether it's soccer um, or it's BMI thing. So my dyke was also a very, um, very, very good mentor here at BMI. Uh, professors, they've been through the classroom setting. They know how it is. So different people in different areas pushing you definitely helps a lot. A lot. Some of our themes this year are leading self, leading your peers, and leading teams. I want to talk a little bit about leading your peers, and we all know that that can be really hard. What is some advice that you can give about leading your peers? Well, I think, it, especially at BMI, it's a lot of little things that lead into the bigger concept of leading. Um, so I keep that whether it was on the soccer field or whether it was during the rat line or in the classroom, all of those little moments, maybe it was 10 or 15 minutes where I was kind of thrown into the fire to lead, uh, those moments definitely helped to direct me into a path of where I know I could be a successful leader. I know how I can lead people, not only um, dealing with their strengths, but also helping them grow as a person. Um, so yeah, just a lot of little things leading into kind of one big overarching theme of this is this is how to lead a group successfully. This is how to lead um, a team successfully, a, a classroom successfully. Before you jump in, get to know the people that you're around. Um, knowing just maybe one fact about the person, knowing that they have two siblings or something can help you in how you lead a person. You know that they're... Um, they're receptive to different viewpoints um, because having a big family, that's something that I always take into consideration of how I lead someone. If they come from a family that's kind of small and they're like the only child, you kind of have to lead them a little differently than you would lead someone who has three other siblings like myself um, because you kind of know how things work, how they are around other people or how they are receptive to um, any type of criticism or anything like that. So I definitely say try to get to, get to know the people that you're around um, before you try to push them too much to accomplish a goal or mission. So going into leading teams, what do you think is the most important thing to remember when you're leading a team? Here, there's something different. Each person holds something different in their life. Really look at what's driving them to be here first off and what will help them stay here. Um, that is something that I have seen, especially this year, being a captain, being one of the older players on the team. Um, things are hard for different people. Um, not everybody is receptive to the same change. So definitely taking a step back and not trying to put myself in someone else's shoes, but just trying to come from an area of understanding I definitely think helps a lot. Right. It sounds it sounds like you 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 sort of have some expert power uh, and and influence and and really the expertise uh, of being on the team uh, for for two or three years. You know you you have an understanding uh, and like you said earlier, you you have an understanding of of a little bit of who, who your teammates are so you can put them in the right situation to, to, to lead them, yeah, to influence them. That's really good. Yeah. Has VMI improved your skills in working within diverse team settings? VMI attracts the same type of person, someone who is headstrong and willing to take on any challenge. Um, so in a VMI sense, we're all, I wouldn't say we're all the same, but we all have the same mindset and we all want to accomplish anything that's put in front of us. But the things that I have learned at VMI and that I can take with me outside of the walls of VMI into a diverse group of people trying to 
leap into accomplishable, that has definitely been something that I will take along with me. So followership to me, it's the same as being a leader. Um, we all have to start someplace. You might look up to the leader of the group and try to follow in their footsteps or use their same tactics. So that is definitely a part of followership, but the same qualities and attributes still apply to someone who is within the group, say a follower to a leader, to me at least. I think we've spoken to a, a, a bunch of folks who would say that leading by example is one of the strongest and, and, and simplest forms of leadership. And as a follower, with your values, how you manage yourself, it, it, I, I can, I totally understand your that viewpoint of, of, you know, it's not really a follower. You're still a leader in this group. So, one final question we love to ask: What does leadership mean to you? To me, leadership means you aren't necessarily the biggest, strongest, fastest, smartest, most outgoing person there is within the group, but you are the person who everyone trusts and everyone believes in you and they know you can accomplish any goal set in front of you. Um, you are ready to face those obstacles. You aren't going to shy away from anything placed in front of you. You're going to be the person, the head of the snake, to say. Um, you're going to be the one driving the force. If someone is down, you're going to pick them up, put them on your back and carry them across the finish line you're going to be the one to um, drive the team towards winning a game or winning a championship or anything like that. Everyone in the group looks up to you and you're really that driving force. You have the motivation, you bring the motivation. That's to me what leading is. That's what a leader is. That's what leadership is. Everything kind of encompasses all of those qualities. Great. That was awesome. Good. Yeah, love it. All right, well, thank you so much, Whitney, for joining us. The CLE would like to thank the following. Alumnus Caleb Minus, class of 20, for the intro and backing music. Find more of his musical stylings on his Instagram page, at Minus Official. That's at M-Y-N-U-S Official. Colonel David Gray, USA Retired, Director of the VMI Center for Leadership and Ethics. And of course, as always, our podcast guests. Find this podcast and other CLE programming information on the VMI Center for Leadership and Ethics website, or try our YouTube channel, or on Podbean. Follow the VMI Center for Leadership and Ethics on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram accounts. See you next episode of The Journey. Thanks for tuning in.